Peter, you will see me, then I need to start. Uh, yes, so I think uh, we can probably go ahead and start now. There are still some joining the meeting and they're trickling in. Um, and just to, to flag again, I, I muted everybody uh, about 30 seconds ago so that there was a little bit less background noise. Okay. So please, if you want to speak, please um, check that you are unmuted. But uh, Dr. Grabowski, I, we can hear you well. OK, I checked uh, so I can start the meeting. Yes, uh, please. Because uh, we need to be on time and I welcome everybody who was able to uh, join us uh, for the first meeting. And for all, I wish, of course, the health, and I hope you all health uh, with your families. So on, be, on behalf of the panel, I would like uh, to welcome you and uh, also wish uh, to thank Secretariat for possibility to join us in this uh, quite difficult uh, environment. So at this uh, time, I am the first uh, time as speaking as uh, co-chair of the panel. And I would like to start by noting my appreciation for the President of General Assembly and the President of ECOSOC for the invitation. So please also allow me to thank my uh, colleague, co-chair, Dr. Ibrahim Mayaki, who was uh, starting the panel's work uh, in the beginning of March. So, and I would like also to uh, name now four new members of the panel uh, who joined us uh, in, uh, recently. Uh, this is Ms. Benedict Shiburet Fasmer, Mr. Bolai Ovasan Noye, and uh, Mr. Karim Dakhir, and Mr. Thomas Telze as a panel. So that now we are all in full capacity, and I'm very positive that the panel will make tangible contributions uh, towards the overall efforts undertaken by member states uh, to fulfill the agenda 25. So, uh, dear colleagues, uh, participants, excellencies, today we have virtual consultations, and it is our first series of virtual meetings uh, to reach out to an interested stakeholders. And of course, firstly, it is our member states in the areas of financial accountability, transparency, and integrity. The panel will continue with an open and a transparent approach to its work and including regular engagements with all member states. For the panel to make actionable recommendations, we will need regularly to hear from you. So let me begin by updating what we did uh, during this uh, month and a little bit. Uh, despite restrictions on international travels and meetings, really, the panel was capable to start substantive work. First, on March 31st, we made a first video conference in full with all member, member uh, of, of the panel attending. Second, the panel has reviewed the background paper prepared by the Secretariat. The paper provides an overview of existing international frameworks related to financial integrity, analysis of cross-cutting issues, and recommendations of topics for possible future consideration by the panel. The paper drew on the work of the International Task Force on Financing for Development, as well as additional inputs from the UN system. Also, the OCD and FIATF were also consulted on the paper. Third, panel agreed to split up uh, our further work in three clusters. First cluster, improving cooperation in tax matters. Second cluster, accountability, public reporting and anti-corruption measures. And third cluster, cooperation and settling disputes. Also, the cluster leads were also agreed between us. Fourth, because of the inability to organize the full multi-day meetings of the panel in spring, the panel is likely to complete its full interim report only in September. But we still will still uh, we will present some initial thoughts to member states by July. We will try to do it at our best. So we remain hopeful that organizing a full meeting uh, 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 will be possible in the future. But we are following the guidance of uh, uh, WHO and UN System of Travel and Meeting Organization. So that's uh, our uh, main uh, job uh, we did uh, during this last month. So the panel wants, uh, of course, wants to hear about uh, every country's key priorities and challenges related to the financial accountability, transparency and integrity. So without you, we will be not able to fulfill our job. 
So we took careful note of the comments made at the launch of the panel. We know that some countries have challenges in terms of national implementation of international agreed frameworks. We also know that some are concerned about the spillovers onto their countries of incomplete implementation in other surrounding jurisdictions. We also know that there are concerns that the international norms themselves are not robust enough and may need to be strengthened. And finally, we also know there are concerns about the inclusiveness and universality of current arrangements. These types of concerns span the clusters that the panel has agreed to work on. Tax matters, accountability and anti-corruption, and cooperation and dispute settlement. We also know there is much ongoing work in the international system. The input from international institutions delivered via the background paper was very helpful. And the Secretariat is already working to schedule direct engagements of the panel with other bodies such as FIA ATF, OCD, and the UN Tax Committee. No, we would like to hear now from your national perspectives and learn what are the challenges and priorities of your countries. We also want to hear your ideas for how the panel can advance work in these areas. These deliberations and inputs will feed into the interim report, which we are going to present to you. At this time, I would like now to pass the floor to His Excellency Dr. Ibrahim Mayaki, co-chair of the panel, who will manage the conduct of the meeting with the help of Secretariat, I hope successfully. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dalia gribos Um Excellencies, uh, esteemed colleagues of the panel, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we proceed, uh, I would like to set some suggestions for the smooth operation of this uh, virtual consultation, which is, for the panel, extremely important. Uh, to keep the dialogue clear, I hope you can mute yourself to ensure background noise is not overwhelming the other participants. Of course, please try to remember to unmute when you are ready to speak. And if you'd like to take the floor, please indicate in the chat room of the meeting. Indicate so in the chat room of the meeting. If you lose sound or video, try refreshing the browser window or try to log out and reconnect again to the meeting via the link which was sent by the Secretariat. Uh, finally, the panel will most benefit from short interventions and interactive discussion. We will also evidently welcome full statements to be sent in writing if you have them. However, we are mindful of a limited time and I would both encourage short interventions and reactions to other delegations. Now, I would like to introduce our cluster leads as uh, Dr. Dahlia mentioned before, and these cluster leads will uh, give you a very brief overview of the work they intend to conduct. First, the cluster on improving cooperation in tax matters will be led by Mr. Jose Antonio Ocampo. So, Mr. Ocampo, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me, uh, of course, uh, thank the uh, the two co-chairs uh, of our panel, the, the other members, and the bit, uh, thank the invitation from the President of General Assembly and ECOSOC uh, for this meeting. Uh, uh, I I feel privileged to uh, to lead this cluster, and uh, which uh, will uh, uh, deal with the issues of international tax cooperation. Uh, this is, of course, an essential issue. Uh, in the Addis Abeba Agenda in Financing for Development. Uh, and uh, it's, an er it's a, also a cluster uh, or an area where there has been increasing cooperation 
uh, notably through the uh, OECD uh, Inclusive Framework, which has about 140 uh, member countries. Uh, of course, the, the UN Tax Committee, uh, which uh, remains an expert committee and not an intergovernmental body. I'll refer to this uh, a bit later. Uh, and the International Monetary Fund, uh, among other organizations. Now, the, the topics that uh, we want to uh, uh, analyze in, in our cluster, uh, I will uh, uh, mention uh, essentially uh, five uh, issues. Uh, the first one is the need for international legal instruments uh, uh, with universal participation, rather than the voluntary schemes that we have today, uh, which include the, uh, as I mentioned, the OECD inclusive framework. The second topic uh, is the allocation of tax rights, uh, particularly due to the um, uh, mobility of capital uh, and the fact that there are services that are provided uh, uh, from, uh, by companies uh, who are not, uh, who don't have residence uh, in a specific country. This is, of course, a major issue uh, for developing countries, and, and it has been the center uh, of the uh, current negotiations in the OECD uh, framework of the digital economy. The third is how to uh, avoid uh, a, a tax uh, evasion and tax avoidance, of course, uh, and what mechanisms uh, can strengthen uh, uh, the capacity of countries to, uh, to avoid it. A fourth issue is the institutional framework, uh, which refers to the uh, uh, organizations I mentioned uh, uh, previously, uh, and notably, I would say, with the United Nations Tax Committee, uh, and whether it should become an intergovernmental organ, uh, and as in fact it was proposed by the G77 uh, in Addis Ababa, but was not approved at that time. Uh, and whether the United Nations should play a, a more central role uh, in international tax cooperation, uh, replacing uh, uh, the role that OECD plays today. Uh, and finally, uh, the issue uh, uh, of re reliable global data, uh, which uh, is, of course, a cross-cutting issue in all of our work uh, in, the, uh, in the panel. Uh, and, and finally, let me say that there's many of these issues relate to the other clusters, uh, for example, the uh, the anti-corruption, because uh, uh, one major source of uh, tax uh, avoidance and evasion in particular uh, is uh, the uh, 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 movement of uh, resources from uh, from countries uh, uh, where they should be paid, uh, taxes should be paid. Uh, the issue of asset recovery, which is closely associated with that. Uh, uh, I mean, to the extent that there has been tax uh, evasion, uh, you know, the, how the funds uh, can be uh, uh, it can go go back to the countries where uh, that um, uh, are the uh, uh, where the taxes should be paid. Uh, with this, uh, I finish, uh, 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 Mr. Koster. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Th thank you very much, Mr. Ocampo. Uh, second, uh, the cluster on accountability, uh, public reporting, and anti-corruption measures will be led by Ms. Susan Rose Ackerman. So Mrs. Uh, Rose Ackerman, you have the floor. All right, um, uh, thank you. And um, I, should, I, I should say I'm, I'm not leading it, I'm coordinating it. <laughs> so the idea is to uh, hear from uh, all of the people in this group, how we should proceed. But let me say a few uh, 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 a few things. Um, we're certainly learning about existing um, uh, international efforts with respect to anti-corruption, but uh, and their relationship to the sustainable development goals. And one question for us is sort of what is missing, what's not working. There's clearly still a lot of of uh, of uh, corruption out there to be worried about. Um, and what can international institutions do? So um, one set of issues um, has to do with um, distinguishing between two groups of people, those people who are paying the bribes um, uh, to get some kind of excess profits or to get contracts they wouldn't have gotten uh, otherwise. Um, the other group are the people who are accepting the bribes 
um, and um, or soliciting uh, the bribes, uh, or just plain embezzling money, just taking it for the for for themselves, um, and um, uh, those raise somewhat different uh, questions when we get to the international community. And third, the jurisdictions that take in funds, uh, either bribes paid or the excess profits that have come from a corrupt uh, deal, um, uh, both countries that sort of specialize in that and other countries, uh, much more diverse economies that, that also in, engage in this kind of, of activity. Um, and, um, uh, and, and then uh, fourth, of course, related to that is the role of the uh, international financial uh, and investment uh, institutions uh, that may um, not ask enough questions about where the money has has coming from uh, or uh, that intersects with the juris with the with the jurisdictions. And of course, finally, some of this, some of what we're talking about is directly related to full scale criminal activity, um, uh, uh, drugs, human trafficking, other things uh, like that. That's a piece of the of the total story. Um, so what kind of issues can we be thinking about? Um, of course, there's a kind of basic background issue of political will uh, that I don't, that, that what can international community do here? I think that, that what the hope would be is that it can provide some kind of moral support to uh, political leaders who want to take on these, on these issues followed by some kind of technical support, which is already happening in many, in many, uh, in many areas. But of course, that depends upon there being political will uh, to make these things, make these things work. Um, and then I think uh, third, we're, there's obviously a, a concern and interest in anti-money laundering um, activities and how those things could be, could actually work as a deterrent. Um, and um, that has to do with both how difficult it is, uh, it's making it harder to get illicit funds actually out of the, the countries where they initially are in the, in the, or, or the transactions that they're related to. And once again, this has to do with the role of, of financial institutions and states uh, in facilitating anonymous uh, transactions. And is there something that, that international bodies like, like the UN and, and the IMF or the World Bank can do in sort of helping uh, some of some of that. So those are just some 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 thoughts. There's this is a there's a wide range of 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 questions we need to think about, and um, we'd like to learn from you, the member states, and from the civil society next week, um, and from some other experts about what what where on the margin can can new things be done that might make a difference. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Rosa Kaman. Finally, uh, the cluster on cooperation and settling disputes will be co-led uh, by Mr. Thomas Stelzer and Ms. Irene Ovonji Odida. So first, Mr. Stelzer will speak, followed by Ms. Ovonji Odida. So Mr. Stelzer, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning from the International Anti-Corruption Academy in Austria. Uh, cluster three, the discussions in cluster three will focus on priority actions for improving cooperation and standardization on bribery investigation and prosecution, examining options to strengthen peer review processes, exploring gaps and develop options to improve capacity and international cooperation on asset recovery and return, and ways and means to tackle the challenges the world is facing in relation to cooperation and settling disputes. Regarding the first group of the issues, I would like to analyze ways to enhance the very much needed co collaboration among UN member states on investigation and prosecution of bribery and, corrupt and corruption crimes and promote a more active sharing of the relevant best practices and lessons learned. We also hope to be able to facilitate con contacts and exchange of experiences among practitioners, investigators, prosecutors, and specialized anti-corruption units investigating and prosecuting bribery and corruption crimes. The peer review process is a powerful tool, tool to help states to enhance the compliance with the anti-corruption standards. We would like to look at this process 
uh, as a way to end. We seem to have lost Mr. Stelzer. Perhaps I could proceed for, on his behalf. Yes, I, uh, I think yeah. I will ask, Sorry, I was I'll ask you to proceed. Sorry, I was disconnected for a moment on my, on my iPad. Oh. Uh, I'm now rejoining by my iPhone. Uh, okay. Uh, just to go back to the, peer, to the peer review process, which is a very powerful tool to help states to enhance their compliance with anti-corruption standards. We would like to look at this process as a way to incentivize the UN member states to take action against corruption. The peer review process should, in our view, help the international community to understand what the major problems with the implementation of the international anti-corruption instruments are and devise uh, cooperative responses and mechanisms to promote compliance. The return of assets of illicit origin is a fundamental principle of UNCAC. Uh, there have very important resolutions have been adopted by the, by, the, by the Conference of States parties. And the steady increase in funds for, of illicit origin flowing from developing countries poses a direct threat to sustainable development, the rule of law and security of nations. In our cluster, we hope to focus on major difficulties the UN member states experience in asset recovery, taking into account the importance of the recovery of proceeds of crime and corruption for sustainable development and stability. Our ambition is to identify action that can be taken at the national, regional and global levels to enhance the implementation of the relevant international agreements, including the two previously mentioned cost resolutions. Uh, international cooperation is a key for implementation uh, of the regional global anti-corruption commitments. Building on the activities of the COST Working Group on International Cooperation, we would like to explore the possibilities for enhancing cooperation among existing bilateral, regional and universal frameworks. While focusing on these areas, our overriding goal will be to identify recommendations that ultimately will contribute to a better implementation of the SDGs. Efficient and effective anti-corruption policies at national, regional and global levels are necessary uh, to promote inclusive and sustainable growth, social cohesion, reduce inequalities and address the global climate crisis. In this, we we'll pay particular attention to the issue of anti-corruption education and training in all sectors of society. We believe that capacity building initiatives may be a, a catalyst for eradicating poverty in all its forms and dimensions and creating inclusive and sustainable socioeconomic development, great equality and equity and fair and just societies. Uh, we will also pay attention, particular attention to ways the international community could make better use of the expertise on anti-corruption activities provided by specialized organizations and institutions and to possibilities to promote partnerships between specialized initiatives aimed at encouraging academic research and exchange. And finally, last but not least, we also hope to be able to promote a strong involvement of and partnerships with the civil society and business in order to solicit their inputs and to ensure that ways are identified uh, for future managers of all sectors of our societies to acquire necessary knowledge and skills to effectively fight bribery and corruption and promote compliance. That's the challenge we are facing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Stelzer. Uh, Mrs. Obonji Odida. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, just uh, once again, we appreciate that uh, both Mr. Stelzer and I will be um, coordinating this group and just uh, again reinforcing that the third cluster will be focusing on cooperation and dispute resolution. So the issues that we'll be looking at in relation to that will connect to the first and second cluster. So for example, dispute resolution mechanisms that support tax 
matters, dispute and resolution mechanisms that support the work in cluster two. And accountability. Okay, so we, I'll just try to, to, to be fast. We will look at the issue of enforcement and lack of robust compliance mechanisms, which are a key barrier to implementation of various initiatives relating to the mandate of the FACTI, the UN FACTI panel, and which may therefore contribute to disputes between key actors, but also to continued loss of resources needed for development. We, in this cluster, we will also look at issues relating to capacity, uh, recognizing that there has been progress, but there may remain capacity gaps in technical or human resources affecting many states. And these may sometimes be related to insufficient funding and hence the importance of improving investment in capacity building through institutions with a role to play in dispute resolution, including through international cooperation. We'll also be assessing in this regard whether rules, standards, and mechanisms for cooperation, for example, in tax matters, such as on automatic exchange of information, and for dispute, dispute settlement, relate to the diverse situations, contexts, priorities, and interests of both developing and developed countries. We will also look at issues related to the regulatory frameworks that impact on dispute resolution, such as international investment agreements, including double taxation treaties and bilateral investment treaties, which delimit rights between state parties and ultimately set bounds for dispute settlement between states and foreign investors, largely multinational enterprises. And finally, we will be looking at global governance as a cross-cutting issue, also impacting on dispute settlement, particularly in terms of UN institutions and instruments required for monitoring and multilateral cooperation to achieve financial accountability, transparency, and integrity, including in areas such as taxation. And in relation to global governance and the question of accountability and dispute settlement, we will also be looking at the role of non-state actors and their engagement in the processes or in influencing the political economy of reform and of dispute settlement, such as transnational corporations and the role and space for civic actors, including NGOs, trade unions, and media, as well as the general citizenship in enhancing accountability and transparency. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Stelzer and uh, Mrs. Ovonji Odida. We would uh, now like to hear from member states. Uh, please note that the meeting will be recorded and posted online in the next few days. Uh, so at this stage, uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Peter Chawla of the Secretariat, uh, let me thank the Secretariat again, uh, to call on the delegations. As a reminder, I ask for you to be mindful of the limited time that we have and encourage short interventions and an interactive discussion. So, Peter, um, you have the floor now. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mayaki, um, co-chairs, and uh, good morning to all the colleagues. I'll try and just give out uh, the list that I've got. I've done my best to keep it in order, but with different technologies, it's a little different than being in the room. Um, so please, uh, any apologies for keeping track of people out of order from what you may have signaled. Um, so I have, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give out three at a time so people can be prepared to unmute at the right time. I have on my list first, um, Algeria, second, the European Union, and third, uh, China. Peter, uh, could I ask you please uh, 
to ask the excellencies who are going to intervene to mention to which cluster we are referring their questions. Great. So yes, absolutely. If you can be specific in that regard, that's very helpful for us. Then also our, our coordinators and our notes can be um, organized more effectively. So yes, uh, first I have Algeria on the list. Thank you. Thank you, co-chair. I have the honor to deliver the statement on behalf of the African group. And uh, allow me at the outset to uh, thank the co-chairs of the high-level panel on international financial accountability, transparency, and integrity, uh, Her Excellency Dr. Dalia grabot kaite and uh, Ibrahim uh, Mayaki for convening this virtual consultation during this difficult time, which uh, necessitate a strengthened international solidarity multilateral cooperation and partnership. Uh, Co-chairs, it is evident that mobilizing sufficient financing both at the domestic and international level for implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is undermined due to insufficient financial accountability, transparency and integrity. It is eroding the ability of developing countries, particularly African countries, to generate resources and directly undercut the efforts of the global community to successfully achieve the sustainable development goals. It goes without saying that these challenges with, will also be exacerbated by the economic downturn and financial turmoil due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite the commitment and actions of developing countries to the implementation, of international agreement in the area, legal, operational, and institutional challenges remain major impediments. It is the hope of the African group that the panel will explore mechanism to enhance greater international cooperation by encouraging countries and relevant multilateral organizations to strengthen their efforts to provide technical and capacity building assistances for developing countries in order to improve their capacity to prevent, detect, and combat illicit financial flows and strengthen good practices on assets returns to foster sustainable development. Studies, including the report of the AUACA high-level panel uh, on illicit financial flows, confirm that harmful commercial practices such as aggressive tax avoidance, which some multinational enterprises regularly employ to erode their taxable uh, bases and shift profits away from jurisdictions where they operate, account for 65% of the illicit financial flows from Africa. Given that the global architecture in this uh, area is the least developed, the African group would recommend to the, Af the FACTI panel to propose concrete recommendation that would adequately address the gap in regulating commercial illicit financial flows. To be more specific, on the first cluster on improving cooperation in tax matters, the African group notes the ongoing efforts to reform existing international tax norms and stress the importance to ensure the legitimate right of African countries to fully participate in this dynamic on equal basis. Accordingly, the African group would appreciate if the FACTI panel could make a recommendation to assist African countries to effectively combat tax environment related challenges and more actively participate in all international tax norm setting processes. On a related topic, as you are aware, there is presently no intergovernmental body within the United Nations system where all countries participate on equal footing to discuss tax policy and administration issues especially those considered 
top priorities to majority of countries in the global south. To address this anomaly, the African group wishes to emphasize the need for the FACTI panel to consider all options, including the option of upgrading the Committee of Experts on International Cooperation in Tax Matters to an intergovernmental body with experts representing their respective governments. Co-chairs, on the last cluster of cooperation and settling disputes, the group would like also to emphasize the need for the FACTI panel to consider how to strengthen and make better use of existing platforms on transparency and exchange of information for tax purposes. In addition, the African group notes that the use of arbitration for settlement of tax and illicit financial flows related dispute are usually very costly. In this regard, we would recommend if the FACTI panel could consider other options, including the possibility of prioritizing the settlement of dispute in countries using national judicial systems and the possibility of the establishment of an international tax tribunal for dispute settlement. The group is also of the view that the best way to discourage illicit financial flow is by strengthening collaboration around the return of proceeds of illicit financial flows to countries of origin. In this connection, the African group encourages the FACTI panel to look at the recently adopted African Common Position on Assets Recovery for best practice on this subject. In conclusion, the African group would like to commend the FACTI high-level panel for convening its first virtual meeting on the 31st March 2020. We take note with appreciation of the review of the overview of existing international institutional and legal framework related to financial accountability, transparency and integrity. The group is confident that the panel will enter ELIA, serve the purpose of providing a concrete recommendation aimed at correcting gaps and imbalances in the international system and thus accelerate the abilities of countries to achieve the sustainable development goal in synergy with the African Un the Union Agenda 20. 63. Let me reassure you, co-chairs, that the African group will continue its constructive engagement in the work of the panel. And I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. Peter? Uh, yes, I have now a request from the European Union. Hello, good afternoon, good morning. Excellent co-chairs, uh, members of the FACTI panel, distinguished colleagues, I have the honor to intervene today on behalf of the European Union and its member states. As we are all aware, the COVID-19 crisis is hitting the world in an unprecedented, terrible manner. We all have to adapt our lives and working methods to this situation, and we appreciate the opportunity to interact virtually and directly today with a high-level panel on financial accountability, transparency, and integrity for achieving the 2030 Agenda, and we appeal to its members to take heed of our recommendations. The more the work of this panel will focus on areas of consensus, the more useful and actionable its recommendations will be. The European Union and its member states consider financial integrity and combating illicit financial flows as a priority for the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. We commend your strong engagement towards better accountability, transparency and financial integrity, joining efforts to achieve the Sustainable Development Goal 16 by promoting peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, providing access to justice for all and building effective, accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. We know that the FACTI panel membership is complete now and that the panel has taken up its work. We wish all panel members a steady hand for their work on these important issues. We regret that the background document for this consultation were only circulated on Monday, which makes it impossible for us to deliver the detailed remarks on their content. 
We will provide written comments after careful consideration of the documentation. Nevertheless, we have a couple of preliminary questions. The readout of the first meeting on March 31st mentions that three clusters for the panel war were proposed. How have these clusters been chosen over others? How will the panel take into account today's exchange as well as the written feedback of member states for the future of its work? How will the panel take into account the stakeholders' feedback such as civil society and the private sector? We take note of the overview of existing international institutional and legal frameworks related to financial accountability, transparency, and integrity posted on the FACTI website. We appreciate explicit reference to existing organs and processes as basis for the work of the panel. In this context, we would like to reiterate our position that we strongly believe that our efforts should focus on the effective implementation of existing instruments notably the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, UNICAD, and the United Nations Convention on International Organized Crime, UNTO, and its implementation review mechanisms. An aspect that is very important to tackle appropriately is corruption. Corruption is a major obstacle to sustainable development and has serious implications hindering development cooperation. We therefore encourage FACTI to closely follow the ongoing preparatory processes for the UNGAS 2021, for which written contributions by member states and other stakeholders have already been submitted to UNADC. In our view, the work of the panel should be based on these instruments, avoiding overlaps and ensuring that we do not undermine what has already been achieved. We urge the panel to focus on areas of consensus, promote implementation of what already exists, and to reach out to the Financial Action Task Force, FATF, the OECD, and G20 that do important work in this field. A focus on implementation is useful. We believe that instead of looking at gaps in the existing frameworks, which will reach preempting the panel findings, it will be more constructive to look at how to address weaknesses of the existing frameworks and at possibilities to enhance implementation. We look forward to seeing conclusions based on solid analysis, recommendations based on robust evidence, and practical examples from the current instruments, and that these all reflect the diverse views existing about how we should reach these goals. In this context, and for the above reasons, we want to express deep concern about the additional instruments of framework reference in the terms of reference, the mentioning of the establishment of a global asset registry in the clusters of the panel war, as well as the conflation of tax avoidance and evasion as financial crimes. Once again, we call upon the panel to seek synergies and cooperation with the work of international institutions, combating illicit financial flows such as the FATF, OECD, and G20 initiatives, and to promote the 16 international standards. We look forward to being consulted further during the drafting and finalization of the report. As we start the decade of action and delivery for sustainable development, and we all commit to act, let us focus on action and implementation without creating new instruments whose value is questionable and that could divert attention and efforts from implementation of existing frameworks and commitments. As we are all aware, the dramatic situation imposed by COVID-19 makes interaction and discussions very challenging. We invite you to adjust the timeline for the work of the panel, in particular, with regards to the presentation of the reports, in order to ensure that the work is thoroughly conducted and that there is sufficient time for consultations before formulating recommendations. In closing, we would like to put forward our availability to continue the dialogue as part of our continued commitment and support on these important topics. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, Pete. Uh, yes, so I have um, I have next on my list, as I said before, China, and then we might pause in case if there are any panel members who would like to respond to any of the the first interventions, but for very briefly. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, co-chairs and colleagues. Uh, China welcomes the FACTI panel 
to engage membership, especially holding these uh, virtual consultations, and appreciates the passive efforts of the panel to soliciting the views of the membership. Financing for development is very important means of implementation to implement the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. We hope the panel could honor its own mandate without compromising the ongoing intergovernmental discussions, maintain the precious consensus being reached by the international community on these important topics of financing for development. On the future work, China supports the panel to have discussions on improving cooperation in tax matters, further deepen, deepening the international cooperation, aiming at combating tax avoidance and evasion, while helping the developing countries and low-income countries to improve their taxation capacity based on their respective needs, hence instigate the global investment and economic growth. China also encourages developing countries to take part in base erosion and profit shifting action items. And China supports increasing the transparency of taxation and information sharing. Of course, bearing in mind, those practices shall be in line with the international standards and treaty regulations. Co-chairs, as uh, UN Secretary General Mr. Antonio Guterres said, there are half of the UN membership, especially those developing countries, does not have access to or have very limited access to internet. Today, the digital divide we are facing is not shrinking, but unfortunately expanding. All inclusivity of the digital economy Taxation governance is of great concern. China wants to share the following recommendations. First, enhance international coordination to achieve synchronization while avoiding disputes of tax systems. Secondly, firmly against any discriminatory taxation in order to better balance the taxation interests of all the parties Thirdly, make good use of the current platforms such as G20, building on the inclusive framework of base erosion and profit shifting to forge more operational action items. Combating illicit financial flows and asset recovery and return is an important channel for financing for development. We recommend the panel conduct constructive discussions on technical issues, such as asset recovery, ratio of return and sharing of the gap of the assets to provide reference for the member states and international community. According to the newly released report by Ankatat, in next two years, different countries are facing 3,000 billion US dollars financing gap Enhancing taxation capacity, combating illicit financial flows to substance, can mobilize the domestic public resources, broadening the funding channels. But when we look at this huge gap, this financing gap, these measures are just not enough. It is in our firm belief, financing for development shall keep the North-South Corporation as its main channel, while south South Corporation can serve as a complement but not substitute. The principle of CBDR should be fully embraced and implemented. Third countries should honor their commitment, actively participate in international development cooperation, and provide support to developing countries in terms of funding technologies transfer, and capacity building. On this, I fully echo what the uh, ambassador uh, from Nigeria who made the uh, statement on behalf of AU on this point. 
so that the difficulties and challenges faced by different countries will be addressed accordingly. This becomes even pressing and relevant when we as a community faced with shared future were confronted with COVID-19 pandemic. China will together with the rest of the membership actively support and participate in the panel's work. My, delega my delegation wish the panel members all the best with your future endeavors. With that, thank you very much, co-chairs and colleagues. Thank you very much, uh, so Peter. Who is next? Uh, so I was going to give a chance to see if there were any panel members to quickly respond to um, any of the questions that were raised by those three interventions. Um, I don't know if, if any of them would like to take the floor. Okay, so I, I will maybe just say one word on the rationale which guided the panel and if my co-chair wants to intervene. Uh, globally, our reasoning is the following, as you all know. Uh, the main objective that is pursued is uh, to increase the capacity in financing the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals. So the panel knows perfectly that uh, there exist instruments, frameworks and institutions working on the issues of uh, illicit financial flows. But at the same time, the, the, the question that the panel is asking is, what are the gaps and how can we tackle these gaps in order to increase the financing of the agenda? So this is the, the, the common thread which guides uh, uh, the panel uh, discussion. So there is a, a full agreement on the fact that uh, there needs to be a, a, a strategy in building on what exists, but what exists do reveal a certain number of gaps that need to be tackled. So what said, uh, um, uh, Madam President, would you like to add a word as a as co-chair? Uh, okay. It was very interesting to see the African and European Union and Chinese uh, opinions on the topics uh, which are important still. But of course, uh, also was one question about how we managed to have these three uh, clusters only, as I understood from European Union uh, statement. So it is very clear that uh, today we want to hear the member states and uh, the stakeholders. Uh, next uh, meeting, we will hear from other organizations, but today, uh, what expectations member states have? Uh, problem is that after these hearings, probably, we will have very huge Christmas tree. Everybody wants everything. And we will again return back for a back uh, for decision to make how to concentrate uh, what we can do and what is possible to be done. And then, especially in the environment with this huge global crisis, we are falling in financial after economic and later will be debt crisis. And that's clear that it will take two years for us uh, to tackle this all uh, COVID-19 um, impact. And in this environment, we also need to look uh, for the gaps of the instruments we already have, because uh, we also know all of us that to have some additional or absolutely new agreements uh, internationally, it will take a lot of time uh, and efforts, which could be too long uh, for our time frame. We we have been gotten for fact uh, uh, work. So that, that means we need to look the concrete situation we are in. The, to group again whatever proposals we will hear today, what is important, what priorities we will be able to perform and what we will be able to achieve in support, of course, with our stakeholders and with member states. So that's uh, how I imagine our job in nearest days and, and weeks. And I'm anyway thankful for already free uh, presentations from the large groups of country. So, and it is very useful for us uh, to reflect uh, 
and to see how other uh, people and states uh, imagine what we can do and what is necessary to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Would any panel member like to intervene very briefly? Yes, <clears throat> this is Mr. Ocampo. Uh, I wanted, uh, first of all, to thank the uh, three interventions from the uh, African group, from the European Union and China, uh, and uh, point out that, uh, of course, uh, uh, we will uh, take into account the existing organizations, uh, but at the same time to uh, propose, uh, uh, you know, some changes in the institutional framework. And one of the issues uh, is the issue uh, raised by the by the African group of, of whether the uh, uh, tax committee of the UN should be an intergovernmental organ or not. Uh, and the other, uh, which is actually a cross-cutting issue for the three clusters, uh, is the issue of the Global Asset Registry uh, that was mentioned uh, by the European Union. Uh, this is a mechanism that could uh, support all the three uh, areas uh, that we have selected in, uh, in our group. Uh, we have to uh, discuss uh, whether this is viable and how it will be uh, built up. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Ocampo. So maybe we can continue with the interventions, uh, Peter. Sure, thank you, um, Co-Chair. So I, I note we have 20 people who have asked for the floor, 20 delegations, um, which is a quite a long list and we have very limited time. Um, so I just might note uh, for, again, as the Co-Chair said at the beginning, to be mindful of the, the time available. Um, I have on my list now um, for the next three, Morocco, Ghana, and Uganda. So I, I would call on Morocco first. Thank you very much, uh, dear Peter. At the outset, uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Ibrahim Mayaki and Dr. Delia Dalia Grudiaki for convening this uh, uh, meeting. Uh, amid the COVID-19 outbreak, the existing challenges for financing development will be alarming. Further urgent and global action is needed to take the appropriate measures. The expansion of illicit financial flows continue to pose a significant threat to the achievement of sustainable development. It is also increasingly threatening the wider security, rule of law, and several development measures. We are convinced that the panel will promote dialogue and collective thinking around the financial accountability, transparency, and integrity related to topics, especially in terms of combating illicit financial flows. The different deliberation, recommendation, and policy advisors will create a timely momentum around these issues at the UN level. We thank Faculty Secretary for circulating the background documents, and we know the three clusters that the panel will be focusing or is focusing by its future work. In this regard, I would like to highlight three main priorities issues for my delegation concerning the three panels. First, providing evidence-based recommendation aiming at boosting stronger, interna stronger international action and cooperation for tax cooperation, combating illicit financial flow, and strengthening good practices on assets return and facilitating capacity building in all the different areas related to financial accountability. Two, considering how new and emerging issues, namely current crisis, could affect international cooperation in tax matters and develop assistance, assessments, commentaries, and appropriate recommendations in this regard. Three, framing adequate recommendation and outreach strategy that will spread the finding and recommendation for the panel on different uh, areas like link to financial accountability and integrity with an aim to simply uh, the recommendation for uh, adequate use by policy. Finally, as conclusion, I would like to conclude by stressing the importance to give specific attention to Africa and our President of the group, my dear brother Ambassador of Algeria, have already stressed that, and the need to provide specific recommendations to African countries affected by illicit financial flows. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Next, I had Ghana. Ambassador Pobi. Thank you very much. And I want to thank the co-chairs of the faculty panel, uh, as well as the presidents of the General Assembly and ECOSOC for this briefing and for the opportunity to exchange views on a very important work being undertaken to curb illicit financial flows. As we begin the decade for action and for the delivery of the SDGs, it is our hope that the panel's work would enhance domestic resource mobilization and help fulfill the promise of the 2030 agenda and the Addis Ababa Action Agenda. Co-chairs, uh, we are confronted today with the COVID-19 pandemic, whose devastating impact has not only strained national health systems, but has also exposed the weaknesses in socioeconomic systems and structures especially the vulnerabilities of developing countries and of Africa, especially. Now, the task of mobilizing domestic resources to deal with this crisis in the immediate term is daunting enough not to speak of the cost of recovery and what it would take to build more resilient public health systems and to put us back on track. Developing countries, therefore, cannot continue to lose much needed domestic revenues to IFFs and hence the relevance of our discussion today. My delegation fully endorses the statement that was made by the permanent representative of Algeria, made on behalf of Africa, and I wish to make the following brief comments uh, in my national capacity. My delegation wishes to stress that universal and equal participation in norm setting and international legal instruments on tax matters is critical. Developing countries must be given the opportunity to articulate our concerns regarding international tax policy and tax administration. And in this regard, we will benefit the, from the panel's recommendations in the, on the specific steps necessary to upgrade the Committee of Experts on International Cooperation in Tax Matters to an intergovernmental body with experts representing their respective governments. This is in response to the growing calls. Two. Given the growing complexity of multinational enterprise operations, the lines between tax avoidance and evasion have become blurred, and there is a need for clear definitions and clarity. We would all, again, like to hear the recommendations of the panel. How do we reform international tax rules to better align where taxes are paid with where the economic activities occur or profits are generated? And for how can we boost the capacity of African countries to effectively curb its illicit financial flows? In view of the high cost of arbitration coaches, could the FACTI panel explore the possibility of settling IFF-related disputes using national judicial systems, as well as, of course, exploring the option of establishing an international tax tribunal for the purpose? In conclusion, uh, let me commend the members of the panel for the work done so far and to express Ghana's hope that today's dialogue will bring forward new ideas and set us upon a trajectory for accelerated action on your all important work. I thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Excellency. And I would, I will uh, thank you very much for your comments and I would recommend again, given the time limitation but we stick to short interventions. Yes, Peter. Mm. Uh, so yes, I had uh, next on the list, Uganda. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we thank can hear you well. You. Thank you, co-chairs. I'll be very brief. I'll start off by thanking the presidents of the General Assembly and ECOSOC for convening and facilitating this FACTI panel. And my delegation also takes note with satisfaction that uh, the panel members are fully constitu constituted. To the co-chairs, um, we welcome this first virtual consultation with UN member states. Given the importance of the subject matter and notwithstanding the disruptions of the coronavirus, my delegation is the view that such consultations with member states are critical in the work of the United Nations and therefore should be held as often as possible, including at regional level, and forums. My delegation thanks the co-chairs for the work done so far in organizing the work, and particularly the cluster of documents that have been prepared, including the work program. We uh, agree fully with the remarks made by the Ambassador of Algeria on behalf of the Africa Group, and my delegation wishes to make a few points in our national capacity, specifically relating to the first cluster. 
First, notwithstanding the current coronavirus pandemic, we members of the United Nations must keep our focus on the Addis Ababa Action Agenda for Financing and Development, which emphasizes the importance of mobilizing the financial resources for implementing the 2030 Agenda and Sustainable Development Goals. COVID-19 may come and go, but the challenges that hamper sustainable development, especially to the LDCs, LLDCs, and SIDS, will remain with us, if not even be further heightened. Secondly, in this regard, we review the establishment of the FACTI panel as an actualization of the multifaceted process of enhancement of global cooperation in the area of financial accountability, transparency, and integrity, which were identified as key ingredients of the Financing for Development agenda. This discussion should continue as an integral part of the intergovernmental processes. We therefore support the long-standing proposals made to upgrade the UN Committee of Experts on International Cooperation in Tax Matters to an intergovernmental body with experts representing their respective governments. Third, the high-level panel report on IFFs from Africa presented to African heads of state in January 2015 formed the basis for an African Union special declaration on IFFs, and thus was Africa's specific contribution to the outcome of the Addis Ababa Action Plan. It is our wish, therefore, that the FACTI panel should take full cognizance of the findings of the high-level panel on IFFs from Africa in its work and final outcome report. Finally, we reiterate the imperative that all international tax cooperation efforts should be approached in an open, transparent, and inclusive manner, ensuring that no one is left behind. It is only in this manner that desired financial accountability, transparency, and integrity can be achieved at the global level. I've kept my remarks very brief, and I wish to thank you, and above all, the co-chairs for the work you've done so far. Thank you very much, Ambassador. So I have the next three I have on my list are Kenya, Iraq, and Brazil. I believe we have the permanent representatives from all three countries uh, registered to make uh, remarks. So I would start with Kenya. We have Ambassador Lazarus Omayo on the line to perhaps you need to unmute your microphone. He needs to unmute, yeah. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh... Um, my name is Susan Mwangi. I'm the DPR of Kenya. My PR is having some technical difficulties. Uh, can I uh, make the remarks on his behalf? Can you hear me? Yes, please. Yes. Mm. Uh, thank you so much. I, I'm the DPR of Kenya, Susan Mwangi. And my PR is currently having some technical difficulties and has requested that I make the remarks on his behalf. If we can go ahead. Uh, thank you, coaches, excellences, uh, distinguished delegates. Uh, I want to thank you for convening this important virtual consultation, despite the current circumstances. And uh, my delegation aligns itself with the statement delivered uh, by Ambassador Sofiane Mimouni of Algeria on behalf of the African group. Coaches, Kenya recognizes that there are numerous challenges that must be overcome in order to create an enabling environment for sustainable development. A lack of financial accountability Transparency and integrity greatly undermine countries' abilities to mobilize sufficient financing at the domestic and international level. In this regard, we welcome the work of the High Panel in exploring further actions to contribute to the strengthening of the international financial architecture in order to achieve the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, and especially at this critical time and in light 
of the COVID-19 crisis. My delegation uh, calls for determined reforms that are subject to timelines and standards in the multilateral systems to combat systemic corruption, money laundering, and the offshoring of illicit outflows. The single overarching aim must be to make it exceedingly difficult to transfer and launder illegally acquired world in any part of the world. We are committed to tackle illicit financial flows and have signed on to the Yaounde Declaration, which, which calls for curbing of illicit flows within Africa. It also calls for fights against tax evasion to enhance domestic resource mobilization. And we recommend the panel to consider the declaration as a point of reference. Uh, secondly, we are committed to creating and strengthening existing institutions and frameworks in order to create a conducive environment for financial accountability, transparency, and integrity. And in this reason, I would like to just uh, speak on uh, tax, tax, tax evasion and avoidance mechanisms. Technology has been essential to some of these efforts. As an example, digitalization of our tax design and revenue administration has reduced taxpayer, taxpayers, uh, tax officer, taxpayer tax officer interactions, thus minimizing opportunities for collusion and evasion. However, a digital financial system can pose fiscal risks to the countries adopting them due to the volume of transactions and the number of taxpayers employed in the systems, including businesses and the classes that are true to government. And risk of failure of the system would have a significant, a significant effect on the overall fiscal revenue of a country and developing states embracing this two system needs support in funding for technologies, innovations to address the security challenges of digital platforms. And we are hoping that the high panel can look into this. Uh, finally, no country can do it alone, as it has been said severely. Enhanced cooperation among states is critical and all members have an obligation to halt the flow of criminal profits and corruption money into their financial institutions and property markets and to combat bribery by their companies of good. The panel may wish to propose measures that can obligate members to cooperate in detecting, preventing and punishing foreign bribery. And in conclusion, we note the expected economic downturn and financial turmoil resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic that will let us exacerbate existing challenges in mobilizing sufficient financing for imp implementing the 2030 agenda. Therefore, the work of the panel is extremely timely, and we look forward to receiving a final set of recommendation actions which take into account the current, the, the, the current context. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Peter. Yes, and next we, we have... I need to be mindful of the time. Yeah, okay. Yes, I believe we have the permanent representative of the mission of Iraq. Thank you. Do you hear me? Yes. Thank you, co-chairs. And uh, let me thank the co-chairs of the high-level panel on the International Financial Accountability, Transparency and Integrity for convening this virtual meeting during this difficult time. First of all, we welcome the panel's first virtual meeting on 31st March 2020 on and the emerge points from the meeting, in particular, the formation of the three clusters according to the priorities set by the panel to continue accomplishing the task assigned to, uh, to, to them that will deal with the three clusters. My delegation would like to focus on the second cluster, which is accountability, public reporting, and anti-corruption measures. We believe the weakness in the international financial transparency is one of the factors of weak confidence in, inter in, in the framework of international financial uh, cooperation. Uh, therefore, we are counting on all the initiatives uh, put forward in the field of enhancing confidence in the international financial system. Besides the economic impacts of, the, of illicit financial flows on the economics of developing countries, especially in mobilizing domestic resources to implement the sustainable development goals, these illicit flows have a major impact on national and international security, since a large part of these flows going to finance 
the crimes and terrorist groups, which makes us facing great responsibility in front of this challenge. So we believe it is very important. It's very important that the final report of the panel to include a number of practical recommendations in this field, such as first establishing executive mechanisms that lead to the recovery of assets. Second, underscore the importance of international cooperation in the financial inquiries among the relevant units in the countries on fund and accounts that for those who are charged with the corruption. Third, underscore the international cooperation enhancing in enhancing information exchange among the national local focal boy points specialized in providing legal aid, which facilitating the implementation of the judicial investigation investigations. Fourth, underline the necess necessity to limiting the participation of those accused of corruption in the commercial and economic businesses worldwide, since most of their money are due to their corruption. And thank you very much for the time given to us. Thank you, co-chairs. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, yes, Peter. Yes, so I have, I, I think those were the three I mentioned before. Now I have uh, the next three coming. Uh, I have three more permanent representatives. I have the permanent representative of Brazil, the permanent representative of Pakistan, and then the permanent representative of Liechtenstein. So the permanent representative of Brazil first, please. Thank the co-chairs for convening this meeting and also to thank uh, FACTI for all the hard work already put in in these extraordinary and challenging times. Uh, I think the opportunity for an exchange of views between member states and, and, and the members of the panel is, is uh, highly laudable. Uh, now, let me say that Brazil uh, approaches this from the fact that uh, the fight against corruption, the promotion of financial integrity, um, transparency and accountability has become a national priority due to a sea change uh, in public opinion perceptions. Um, in this light, the government has been implementing a wide range of me measures to curb corruption and address illicit financial, financial flows in all its dimensions, including sanctions against corrupt individuals and companies and the active promotion of integrity, both in the public and the private sectors. Um, and needless to say, this is an effort that uh, does require uh, international cooperation in its support, and we have been uh, witness to, to the benefits and the usefulness of, of, of this cooperation in practice. Now, um, I, I, I would not like to, to, to focus specifically on, on any one of the clusters. What I would like to, to do very briefly is to um, have some preliminary comments on uh, the fact the issues note and the background paper recently issued um, to highlight uh, uh, a few areas where we look at uh, them with a bit of concern and other areas where we encourage FACTI to go um, full steam ahead. Um, on, on, on the side of, of concern, um, the first, the first issue that uh, does raise um, some eyebrows for us is the issue of cession of sovereignty in the context of multilateral enforcement. And that's, that's on page 25 of the background paper. This is something that has, uh, has to be looked at with extreme care um, and, 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 and will raise a, a number of issues. Uh, so, so just to highlight that. The second issue, which, which we also see with a bit of concern, is, is um, the possibility of having the management of repatriated stolen assets assigned to NGOs. And that's in page 17 of the background paper. This is something I think will certainly raise uh, many eyebrows in uh, national authorities responsible for the recovery of stolen assets. So once again, something to be uh, seen with extreme care. The other issue where we have um, also uh, a bit of concern 
is what seems to be a, a, a prejudging of the outcome of the UNGASS on corruption scheduled for next year. Now, uh, the impression we got, and, and, and we might be mistaken, is that Fakti um, already uh, has taken for granted that uh, this incipient and controversial proposal to create an international anti-corruption court uh, is a given. So once again, I think we have to tread carefully and wait for uh, the discussions uh, in that forum to proceed before uh, making any specific recommendations. On, on the positive side, I would like to uh, commend and encourage FACTI to move forward on some very insightful and useful information on issues such as tracking illicit flows, on the balance between the right to privacy and transparency, on accountability and anti-corruption measures, capacity building, and the impact of di digitalization. We also greatly appreciated the listing of existing instruments and institutions in Annex 1, which is, which is always a useful starting point. Um, let me just conclude by saying that we will continue to be a strong voice in the fight against corruption at both domestic and international levels and encourage uh, FACTI to keep uh, member states abreast of uh, their work and, uh, if possible, uh, through this uh, exchange of views process. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Peter? Yes, thank you. I have next uh, Pakistan. Permanent representative of Pakistan. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you well. Very good. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank you, uh, co chairs, for convening this meeting, and I'd like to thank the Secretariat of Fact here as well for this uh, virtual meeting. It's uh, uh, important to have these consultations despite our difficulties. Uh, we also have looked at the report of the 31st March meeting, uh, and we have great interest in that and some specific comments. Uh, firstly, we attach great importance to uh, the work of this panel. We all know uh, that uh, without a grip on this illicit financing, uh, the SDG achievements will be difficult. Uh, just the, according to the UNODC, just the criminal proceeds uh, annually uh, that flow out of developing countries amount to about $2.1 trillion, uh, which is uh, almost equal to the amount that, uh, that is assessed to be the financing gap for the SDGs for the developing countries. And, and this is a, an important nexus that we need to keep in mind. Uh, Coaches, I have uh, three comments on, on the three uh, on the three clusters. Firstly, uh, I think the focus uh, on on taxation and tax avoidance is is very important, uh, and we hope that uh, uh, the group will be able to come forward with important uh, recommendations uh, for for action by the United Nations um, among. Uh, among the issues, of course, is devising equitable rules for taxation of, digit, of the digital economy, and we've had some interesting comments and, and, uh, and suggestions uh, on this. Secondly, with regard to corruption in stolen assets, um, firstly, I think corruption uh, should be looked at both uh, on both sides, uh, the insiders and the receivers of, of corruption. Uh, and the asset uh, recovery should also be looked at on, on both sides. Um, we have particular concern with regard to the fact that um, there are no uh, effective mechanisms for asset return to developing countries. And developing countries have, have great difficulties in securing return of, of illicit assets, even when these are identified. And therefore, Pakistan has proposed uh, the adoption of an additional protocol to the Convention Against Corruption in order to uh, enhance this uh, machinery and mechanism for asset return to developing countries. Thirdly, with regard to international um, cooperation, uh, three small comments. Uh, firstly, on dispute settlement, uh, 
it is important, I think, vital that one reviews, uh, that the panel is able to review the experience under the, the investment treaties. There are blaring, uh, blaring cases of injustice where corruption has been ignored and actions have been pronounced against developing countries. Uh, and I believe that uh, as a practical and objective review of, of the adjudication and, and case study in this would be very important in order to make uh, appropriate recommendations. Uh, secondly, uh, on international uh, cooperation, uh, I believe that one of the important objectives of the panel should be to see how to bring coherence in the system. We have work on illicit financial flows uh, that is spread over so many uh, bodies, uh, uh, both intergovernmental, non-governmental, private, uh, and so forth. And it is important, I think, to uh, see how we can bring coherence into the system in order to enhance uh, the effectiveness of the international efforts to stop illicit uh, trafficking, illicit financing, and secure uh, the return of, uh, of criminals, criminally transferred assets uh, from the developing countries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador and Peter. Okay, so uh, then, I, as I mentioned, we have the permanent representative of Liechtenstein on the list. Thank you very much, moderator. Uh, I'm the deputy permanent representative of Liechtenstein. Uh, thank you to you and to the co-chairs for today's meeting. Um, I'll um, make only brief remarks uh, given the, the time pressure, but let me uh, start by making a comment on, on the process. Um, we have previously expressed uh, our views and expectations that the panel adopt an inclusive and transparent working method. Um, the meeting today, uh, it's been mentioned by others, has been called at very short notice with very substantive documentation and provides only limited space for interaction among states. And we, of course, see that the interest in the topic is very high. Um, when you look at the speakers list. We do not believe that the format of today's consultation is appropriate to uh, the challenge at hand, nor does it offer a platform that many states have asked for in order to express our views on these complex issues. Um, on substance, um, I will I'll be very brief because uh, many of the points I wanted to raise have been raised by others, including the delegate from the European Union and uh, as we have done previously, um, we have submitted um, uh, written input uh, that we hope that the panel will consider in its work going forward. Um, let me just say this, that we have previously expressed um, our concern at the potential of, of the work of the panel to unravel long-standing international consensus on the different and very complex subject matters it has given itself in its work. In order pre to preserve this consensus, the panel needs to proceed within the existing legal, institutional and normative framework, respect the mandates of the bodies that already deal with those issues, and focus its work on implementation of existing legal and political commitments. We have previously been assured that our concerns have been taken duly into account by the panel, um, but I have to say that the report of the first meeting of the panel has added rather than alleviated our concerns. Um, as I said, um, more substantive input on the different topics uh, of your, of your uh, report uh, have been submitted in writing and we will continue to engage with the panel um, also in the upcoming consultation. So I will leave it at that for the moment. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Uh, now, Peter. Uh, yes, so I have uh, on my list next uh, to go through the um, Deputy Permanent Representative of Nigeria, the Deputy Permanent Representative of Saudi Arabia, and then I have Mexico. 
So please, uh, Nigeria first. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now, yes, Ambassador. Yes. Okay. Um, Excellencies, co-chairs, we want to thank all members of the FACTI panel and the presidents of the General Assembly and ECOSOC for this very noble initiative and for the good job you have done thus far. We are also happy that we now have full membership of the panel. My delegation aligns itself with the statement delivered by the permanent representative of Algeria on behalf of the African group and wishes to make the following comments in our national capacity. We appreciate the convening of this virtual meeting, which will provide us the opportunity to rub minds on the very important work of the panel and hope that the FACTI panel would continue to transparently engage with and keep member states abreast throughout the process. My delegation attaches important attaches great importance to the work of the FACTI panel as there's a link between global tax reforms, curbing illicit financial flows, and the ability of most developing countries to effectively respond to the coronavirus pandemic. To effectively manage the pandemic and ensure appropriate post-COVID-19 economic recovery, it is important that the international community through the FACTI panel spotlight how illicit financial flows is harming developing countries and making it harder for them to achieve internationally and regionally agreed development goals and targets. In this regard, it is hoped that the panel would beam its searchlight on policies, practices and laws in different regions and, con and countries that have continued to facilitate asset stripping from the economies of most developing countries through illicit financial flows and tax returns. We welcome the division of the work of the panel into clusters and wish to make the following recommendations. On the cluster on improving cooperation in tax matters, my delegation would like to highlight three points. First, the global rise of tax havens and financial secrecy jurisdictions have created space for tax avoidance. Regrettably, the current dominant application of the OECD method of arm's length principle of taxation that does not adequately capture intra-company transactions for tax purposes is being grossly abused by multinational enterprises that hide under it to shift profits away from developing countries. Where their, economies, where their economic activities occur and profits are generated. We therefore encourage the FACTI panel to propose options to cover these loopholes. Secondly, it is important to ensure that any reform of the international tax system is comprehensive and fair in its allocation of taxing rights between developed and developing countries as well as in enhancing corporate regulation and taxation in all jurisdictions where they operate. We therefore encourage the FACTI panel to examine the effect of the current OECD-led proposals for the reform of corporate income tax that includes options for shifting to a system of unitary taxation of multinational companies and highlights its possible implications for domestic, domestic resource mobilization in developing countries. We therefore encourage the FACTI panel to examine different tax policies and practices across regions and make recommendations that will suit the priorities of developing countries, particularly in the areas of informal sector taxation, harmful tax competition, transfer pricing, and trade misinvoicing. It is also important that the panel critically examines drivers of harmful tax competition in developing countries and their links, if there is any, to tax incentive regimes, as well as the role of financial secrecy in enabling tax avoidance and evasion. 
On the close of on ownership transparency and re public reporting, my delegation will appreciate if the faculty panel could examine options for ensuring appropriate beneficial ownership register of all legal entities and legal arrangements in all countries, and how to ensure that the accounting reporting standards are governed by the principle of country by country reporting. It is the view of my delegation that the faculty panel should further examine the possible roles trade unions, civil society organizations, non-governmental organizations, and investigative media could play as whistleblowers or whistle agents in investigating and reporting all forms of illicit financial flows. The panel should also examine how to engage regulatory bodies, including those for lawyers, accountants, auditors, and bankers in enforcing ethical professional standards and hold their members accountable for abetting the development and implementation of tax avoidance and evasion schemes, among others. The FACTI panel presents an opportunity to bolster progress on these issues. My delegation also believes that the panel can strengthen efforts in the area of curtailing or eliminating IFF and enhancing asset recovery and return. And in this set, we, we support the recommendation made by the peer of Pakistan, in which he, he suggested an additional protocol to enhance access return. We thus encourage the panel to look at the recently adopted African common position on asset recovery and return as one of the existing best practices in this area. Our hope is that the panel would, in line with the focus of the union, UN, on this matter, accelerate progress in stemming illicit financial flows and engendering equitable international tax systems. I thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ambassador. Yeah. Peter? Uh, yes, now we have the Deputy Permanent Representative of Saudi Arabia. The DPR of Saudi Arabia, if you maybe need to unmute yourself before you speak. So, so maybe we can go to the next one and come back. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. I had I had said that I had Mexico next on the list. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mexico appreciates the convening of, uh, of this consultation, uh, as well as all of the efforts of the FACTI panel uh, thus far. As we've stated before, we really believe that the FACTI panel can provide value added to member states at a time when financial integrity is, of, uh, is really a critical component in achieving the 2030 agenda and our financing for development goals. But in order to do so, its work should be focused on strengthening the implementation of what already exists, namely the UN Convention Against Corruption, the ACWG Guidelines, OECD Bribery Convention, and work of other uh, regional bodies. This international legal framework for combating corruption is a hard-fought multilateral triumph. That said, we do recognize that much remains to be done in terms of identifying synergies in the context of the decade of action. ONCAC is, of course, of fundamental importance as we prepare for the ONGAS on corruption in 2021. We would encourage the panel to avoid duplicating efforts uh, that are being undertaken in the context of ONCAC and would welcome recommendations that explore how the existing legal frameworks could be used to accelerate uh, the implementation gaps. Uh, in this session, we've been invited to share our national priorities in the field of financial transparency and accountability. Uh, so this touches on all three of uh, the, the clusters, but uh, allow me to share very briefly the government of Mexico's five-pronged approach to combating corruption. Uh, number one, greater involvement of citizens and civil society in vigilance. Uh, two, facilitating access to technologies, particularly 
in regards to public information. We feel there's uh, quite a bit of opportunity there. Uh, three, effective protection of whistleblowers in line with international conventions, as has been mentioned by others. Uh, five, relaunching the career civil service with a gender perspective and fairer administrative procedures. And five, promoting austerity and fiscalization in the reviews of public finance. The role of the public sector cannot be, uh, the private sector, I'm sorry, cannot be underestimated. Uh, so we've established a corporate integrity registry uh, that seeks to promote higher ethical standards in corporations. We think this can be a value added when discussing the international uh, cooperation that's needed, including in the field of asset recovery. Um, alongside the multi-stakeholder approach, we continue to take steps to strengthen our institutional capacities, uh, particularly in the fields of uh, financial intelligence and in the Attorney General's office. A key feature of the changes being implemented in Mexico includes the legal redistribution of recovered assets into social programs. So we believe that the peer review mechanism could be a useful tool to build on the exchange of best practices, uh, but also to follow up on the policy changes that are being made. We're aware that illicit financial flows do tend to have a disproportionate impact amongst the poor. So greater international cooperation on asset recovery when done with strict adherence to the law and with a social focus is a field that could benefit from greater discussion from the FACTI panel. So once again, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. We look forward to continuing uh, to engage and in, in sharing practices uh, with you that reaffirm the utility of the existing international legal framework, particularly as we prepare for UNGAS 2021. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I can see that the DPR of Saudi Arabia has rejoined the meeting. He dropped out for a minute, so we, he can have the floor now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. President, at the outset, I am honored to express my appreciation uh, to you in convening this important uh, meetings. Just like I'm going to share like some uh, remarks, uh, my country affirms that illicit financial flows in major threat to financial stability of countries in achieving their national sustainable development goals. And these illicit flows are continuously increasing to a degree that exceeds the possibility of detection, generating uh, severe complications for developing countries that cannot tolerate more burdens. Corruption, in general, reverts countries of the resources necessary to move forward to exercise their economic rights, particularly the right to development. My country looks forward to working together in closing that gaps and identifying vulnerabilities in our system through combating bribery uh, and corruption, preventing money laundering. Thank you, and I wish everyone to be safe. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. So I will I will do the next three. I have a request from the Deputy Permanent Representative of Sudan, and then I have Colombia and India. So Sudan, you have the floor. Uh, Sudan, we cannot hear you. Uh, have you uh, unmuted your microphone? And please try again. Okay, maybe we should go to the next one and yeah. come back. Hello. Oh, there we are. Can you hear okay. me now? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me the floor, and uh, thank you also for convening this very important uh, uh, meeting. I also join myself to the statement made by Algeria earlier on behalf of uh, the African uh, Union. However, I have a couple of uh, points to be, to be made on our national capacity. Uh, 
before going to the points, I just would like to uh, to agree with my colleague from Liechtenstein that um, uh, we received the invitation for this meeting uh, uh, in a very short uh, notice. Uh, then coming to the point, I just would like to say that uh, my uh, transitional government in my country is uh, is committed uh, to combat corruption, illicit financial flows, and to enhance financial accountability. Uh, my second point is that uh, there is very bad need for capacity building, uh, especially on the issue of uh, recovering of stolen uh, assets, which is now as uh, is, is, uh, as as priority in my country. I, uh, I thank you so much, actually, and uh, looking forward to receive uh, the report on this uh, uh, meeting. Uh, and. Uh, I just uh, thank you again for convening the, the, the meeting and uh, uh, we'll be waiting for the report. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Peter. Next, next we have Colombia and then we'll come India and then Russia. Thank you, Chair. Good morning uh, to the esteemed faculty panel members and fellow member states representatives. We would first like to commend the President of the United Nations General Assembly and the President of the ECOSOC on the creation of the FACTI panel. Uh, my government recognizes that the work of such a panel will contribute towards examining issues that are of concern of all. Areas such as financial and beneficial ownership, transparency, tax matters, bribery and corruption, money laundering, confiscation, and disposal of the proceeds of crime and the recovery and return of stolen assets, as well as the other cross-cutting issues which the FACTI panel has identified as the focus of its work, are of the most importance, of the up, utmost importance for the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals. As it is evident from the way we are meeting today, the world is undergoing a crisis of, an, of a massive scale without precedent in our lifetime. The present impact that this health crisis will have on all aspects of economic life and society as a whole is yet to be fully grasped or comprehended. It is therefore in this moment that the FACTI panel's work is of the utmost importance. Now, it is a time when resources meant to offset this crisis, this crisis need to reach their intended recipients without delay or obstacles. The effort that the FACTI panel will undertake with regards to studying and analyzing the existing international, institutional and legal frameworks related to financial accountability, transparency and integrity will in turn strengthen those set frameworks. International cooperation in assets recovery as well as in judiciary investigation is a key element for uh, the strengthening of international uh, relations. Also, all of the panel's intended, intended areas of work and eventual findings will undoubtedly be of great value. The Republic of Colombia is especially interested in the FACTI panel's endeavors with regards to fighting corruption and bribery. It is no secret that Colombia has a keen interest in, in strengthening the international legal and institutional system aimed at fighting all aspects of corruption. As such, Colombia considers that it is vital, of vital importance that the FACTI panel identify gaps within the current international anti-corruption mechanisms and explore the viability of innovative ideas aimed at overcoming their shortcomings. United Nations Convention Against Corruption is a robust and comprehensive legal instrument, but is only as good as its level of implementation and application worldwide. The numerous corruption scandals that have presented themselves around the world in recent years are proof that the development of additional mechanisms and institutions aimed at curbing the spike has not yet been exhausted. Among these innovative mechanisms, Colombia supports the creation of an international anti-corruption court aimed at ending impunity and fighting corruption on, on a transnational level, as well as being capable 
of strengthening the implementation of the relevant anti-corruption international legal instruments, is starting with ONCAC. A proposal as such for Colombia, it is paramount that the FACTI panel's efforts and resulting proposals are aimed at supporting the preparatory process of the special session of the General Assembly of Cor on Corruption, ONGAS 2021, concurrently paving the way for a resulting political declaration that is both comprehensive as well as action-oriented. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So I have eight more speakers on the list. Uh, so people can be aware of the timing we have. Um, I have next three, India, Russian Federation, and the United States of America. Okay. Thank you for giving me the floor. Uh, we thank the co-chair and panel members for the briefing and the update on the work of the panel. Co-chairs, as we enter the decade of action and delivery to implement the SDGs, we still face enormous financing gaps to implement the 2030 agenda. Added to this, is the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, which has only exacerbated our challenges. The continued lack of financial accountability and transparency erodes the ability of states to raise domestic revenue and also creates an uneven playing field that harms equity and inclusiveness of our economies. Co-chair, in our view, the panel should offer solutions to strengthen existing systems and make them more robust, effective, and universal in approach to combat all forms of illicit financial flows. My delegation would recommend the following priority actions to the panel for promoting greater financial accountability, transparency, and integrity for achieving the 2030 agenda. With regard to the first cluster, cooperation in tax matters, the panel should consider tax issues such as tax avoidance and evasions, which are currently not covered by existing international instruments. Secondly, the growth of e-commerce and digital business models has increased challenges for states to collect tax. Digitalization has made it easier for platforms to operate in markets without triggering tax residency rules, resulting in evasion of taxes on corporate profits. There is need to better align taxation with location of real economic activity. The panel should look into the issue of allocation of taxation rights in an era of digitalized economic activity. This will enable developing countries to mobilize resources and provide a level and equitable playing field. Thirdly, currently there is no inclusive intergovernmental body where member states can negotiate on an equal footing and agree to effective solutions to tax related issues. Therefore, we see the need to initiate a transparent intergovernmental process under the auspices of UN to address this. The UN Committee of Experts on International Cooperation in Tax Matters should be upgraded to an intergovernmental UN global tax body. This will provide a more equitable and representative tax body where developing countries will have greater say in framing global taxation policies. The panel should provide solutions to force, foster universal participation in international legal instruments on tax matters, enhancing information sharing so that developing countries can benefit from the existing norms and standards. Finally, while discussing these issues, care must be taken to ensure that no parallel structures are set up to pursue the same objectives. For instance, to promote effective implementation of legal, regulatory, and operational measures for combating money laundering, terrorist financing, and other threats to the integrity of the international fi financial system, we have the FATF. The FATF has worked intensively to generate necessary political will to bring about national legislative and regulatory reform in these areas. There are more than 200 countries and jurisdictions committed to implementing them. Therefore, in such instances, the panel should ensure that existing institutions are strengthened, the established instruments are not undermined, and no duplicate structures are created. Going forward, we will continue to constructively engage with the panel in future. I thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, Peter. Next, we have Russian Federation. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the Russian Federation welcomes the launch of the panel and takes the new initiative in the context of efforts and measures towards strengthening the international legal, legal regime for the return of criminal assets, elimination of ex existing legal uncertainties and differences, 
the development of specific measures to dispose of arrested, confiscated and returned assets on the principles of legality and justice. We join statements of other delegations that in its work, the high level panel of experts should closely interact with existing specialized international formats, in particular, the Conference of State Parties to the UNCAC, United Nations Office with Drugs and Crime, UNCTAD, without duplicating or replacing them. This is especially important uh, in view of the preparation of the special session of the United Nations General Assembly against corruption scheduled for April 2021. Thus, the panel of experts should consider the final declaration of special session when preparing recommendations which are supposed to be submitted for discussion in the General Assembly and therefore should not be politicized and of formalistic character. This is uh, in respect of national priorities. In the regard of, in the regards of our questions, first, uh, we would be interested in uh, understanding in detail how the panel the panel's practical work will be organized, which body will provide it with secretariat support and prepare documents, and how the cooperation with the uh, state parties, law enforcement agencies could be uh, established. Secondly, uh, our question to the panelists, which uh, would be your attitude to exploring the possibility of applying the provisions of the ANCAC to situations of returning assets resulting from uh, the commission, not only corruption crimes, but also offenses involving civil law and administrative responsibility. This applies, first of all, to civil liability in the event of the establishment of property acquired on unconfirmed income as well as to administrative responsibility for illegal remuneration on behalf of a legal entity. Further, the Russian Federation would be interested in generating political momentum for strengthening international cooperation in such areas as the use of modern information in digital technologies in the prevention of corruption, as well as combating corruption-related crimes committed using these technologies in accordance with Articles 5 and 48 of the ANCAC. Lastly, we would appreciate to know whether the issues of uh, tax uh, competition, specifically the control of restrictive business practices, including those by multinational enterprises, could be addressed. And I thank you. Th thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next one, Peter. That's the United States of America. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, panel members, uh, excellencies, co-facilitators. Uh, since this is the first time that I'm interacting with the uh, full group, I would like to uh, welcome the uh, new members to it uh, and take this opportunity to thank you both uh, for the effort that you have put forth so far uh, and also for uh, the service uh, that you're going to be providing here. Um, uh, to start out with at the very top, um, I would like to just say that the United States continues to believe that we need to maintain a clear focus on coming together as the international community uh, to combat COVID-19. Uh, we do not believe that the FACTI panel is an essential aspect of this work and will not accept attempts to associate this panel with the COVID-19 response. Uh, uh, furthermore, uh, the United States believe that, uh, that over the past several decades, the international community has come together to develop a strong international architecture to prevent and combat corruption. Uh, this architecture, particularly the obligations and commitments outlined in the UN Convention Against Corruption, UN Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime, the OECD Convention on Combating Bribery of Foreign Public Officials in International Business Transactions, and the recommendations of the Financial As Action Task Force provide a comprehensive set of measures countries can put in place to prevent and combat corruption and money laundering. Ultimately, the fundamental challenge that the international community faces at this point in addressing corruption and money laundering is not an inadequacy of architecture, but it is uh, implementation by member states. Uh, this concern is uh, underscored by the evidence. Uh, for example, the UN Office on Drugs and Crime has started uh, to analyze the results from the country reviews conducted under the second cycle of the UNCAC implementation review mechanism. The analysis found that of the 27 states parties that completed country reviews, 26 of them received recommendations 
related to Article 7, which outlines measures to ensure integrity in public sector. Uh, 23 states parties also receive recommendations related to Article 14, which outlines measures to prevent money laundering. UNODC found similar trends in countries implementation of UNCAC Chapter 5 on asset recovery. Of the state's parties uh, with completed reviews, more than 25 received recommendations on Article 52, which is related to the prevention and detection of transfers of proceeds of crime. Fortunately, uh, there are already bodies and initiatives in place where countries are working together uh, to prevent implementation or to implement uh, anti-corruption commitments and improve uh, international uh, cooperation. To highlight only one, the UN Convention Against Corruption's Conference of States Parties and subsidiary working groups have long been dynamic and construction, uh, constructive fora for states parties to engage in discussions and exchange best practices on how to effectively implement the convention. The panel should therefore consider how to encourage member states to more actively and effectively participate in these existing bodies and initiatives. Uh, to this end, the panel should also be careful that the recommendations it makes uh, uh, do not adversely affect the hard work already underway both by existing international bodies and by individual member states. For example, the background paper prepared by the panel highlights a number of proposals uh, related to asset recovery and foreign bribery, as well as new international criminal justice mechanisms. These proposals have gained attention in recent years as ways to address perceived gaps and limitations in existing anti-corruption efforts. Many of these proposals, however, could jeopardize the hard work of our anti-corruption practitioners. They could draw valuable attention and resources away from ongoing efforts thereby stalling and potentially negative, negating the significant progress the international community has achieved in preventing and combating corruption. We do appreciate the panel's acknowledgement that peer review processes are an important component of multilateral cooperation initiatives. The operation of these review mechanisms are ultimately the responsibility of their respective members under each mechanism's own term of references. However, the United States does agree uh, that there are certain voluntary me uh, measures countries can take to improve the utility and impact of these review mechanisms. Uh, for example, there's a growing international consensus that transparency and inclusivity in uh, uh, anti-corruption review strengthens both the conduct of the reviews and the impact that they can have. Consequently, the United States has long encouraged uh, states parties to uncac to involve non-governmental stakeholders in their reviews under the implementation review mechanism and for states parties to publish these full reports. Uh, we encourage the panel to con uh, consider a similar recommendation. Uh, finally, there's a lot of uh, existing expertise on these issues, especially among the various international organizations. Uh, UNODC should therefore play an active and key role in informing this panel's deliberations and shaping its recommendations. And we urge the panel to strengthen its coordination with UNODC in, regard, uh, in this regard going forward. In addition, it is critical to maintain a clear distinction between tax crimes, including fraud and evasion, with inappropriate but lawful tax avoidance. While the uh, latter is an important public policy issue with international implications, it is not a matter of tax criminality and uh, that would implicate uh, illicit financial flows per se. We accordingly do not accept the notion that uh, inappropriate tax avoidance would be equivalent to an uh, illicit financial flow. Uh, moving forward, we would appreciate more advanced notice when member state engagements like this are scheduled in order to be able to adequately prepare. We are also concerned that uh, the schedule 55 minutes today, and this is becoming increasingly obvious, uh, obvious for the panel to hear member state feedback and response do not uh, is not adequate. Uh, to be clear, we remain deeply concerned about the process which created the FACTI panel. We reiterate our belief that the panel far exceeds any mandate in the Addis Ababa action agenda or a second committee resolution. We welcome the separation of the FACTI panel from UN mandated processes since General Assembly Resolution 74-206 has not mandated the creation of this panel. Uh, and lastly, while the FACTI panel takes time to research these topics over the next year, the United States will continue uh, to actively partner with countries in their efforts to effectively follow through on implementation of their commitments. We will continue to help partners improve their ability to marshal domestic resources to accomplish their development goals and look forward to working with them to more robustly address corruption, money laundering, and other related crimes. Uh, and I thank you very much all for your time today and uh, the ability to provide this input. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, 
Peter? Yes. So How many next... more speakers do we have? We have five. So hopefully five. we can get through them fairly quickly. I know we've, we've okay. run quite long. Um, so the next three I have are the United Kingdom, Switzerland, and Japan. So the UK first. Thank you. Um, excellencies, colleagues, congratulations to the new panelists on your appointment and thank you for the briefing. In the interest of time, I refer you to the UK statement of the 2nd of March on the launch of the FACTI panel, in particular, the controversy surrounding the FACTI panel's creation, our concerns that the panel will inadvertently undermine existing frameworks and organisations, including by duplicating work better done elsewhere, as other delegations have mentioned, and our recommendation that the panel identifies areas of consensus where we can make progress so that its report is actionable and impactful. The UK, domestically and internationally, has taken significant action in the field of financial accountability, transparency and integrity. Nevertheless, in general terms, as others have mentioned, we are concerned by the foundations laid for the panel's work in the background paper, in particular the appearance that the recommendations have already been written. There are several instances where the panel's proposed work is already well covered by existing international institutions. Increasing the UN's role in these areas would delay progress and create complexity. Examples include proposals on one, a UN convention on tax, the UN tax committee and a unitary taxation model. Two, a global asset registry. Three, an international court on anti-corruption. Four, UN oversight of anti-money laundering capacity development already done by FATF or the IFIs. And five, multilateral legal mechanisms which could undermine Chapter 5 of UNCAC. Instead, on tax issues, we see merit in the panel's proposed work on beneficial ownership transparency, as some others have mentioned, as well as some potential work on improving international cooperation to ensure the payment of value-added tax cross borders. We also encourage the panel to look into the prevention aspect of corruption, as well as the unequal implementation of essential laws and regulations required by FATF standards, and the importance of resourcing domestic agencies according to risk. More broadly, we believe it is important for the panel to focus on timely, targeted and evidence-based recommendations that demonstrably lead to better outcomes for Agenda 2030 as well as furthering the implementation of existing frameworks, standards and commitments, in particular those contained in UNCAC. We would like to ask the panel the following questions. What further consultations do you plan with member states? What is the timeline you expect for the working groups and their papers? And will you be giving member states an opportunity to comment on the draft reports before publication? We will also submit detailed comments on the background paper in due course, as well as further questions and concerns we have around the panel's working methods and the process going forward. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, now it's Japan, I guess. Mm. Well, I had uh, Switzerland first. Uh, Switzerland. And okay. then Japan. Mm. Thank you. Um, let me first thank you, co-chairs, for convening us today and providing us with the opportunity to engage with the faculty panelists. As stressed in the past, Switzerland considers financial accountability, integrity and transparency as an issue of particular relevance for the international community as a whole and for achieving the SDGs. Switzerland continues to be engaged in those issues discussed at the UN, both here in New York and in Vienna, but also in international fora outside of the UN. Given the short notice of today's session, in midst of the FFD process and crisis modus of government entities back home, our time to consult the relevant government entities was unfortunately very limited. For the future, we would appreciate being informed timely about next steps in the further process. Transparency is key for the credibility of the panel's work. As expressed earlier, for Switzerland, the full implementation of existing international law and relevant standards remains the top priority. Designing new instruments while neglecting existing obligations will not bring us any closer to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. We are glad to see that the Secretariat's background paper takes stock of ongoing efforts to improve the implementation of norms and standards, and we expect the panel to focus its attention on this and how obstacles in the implementation can be addressed. With regard to asset recovery and asset return, 
We consider the established fora and process men processes mentioned in the background paper, including the CRIN, the Stone Asset Recovery Initiative, the Lausanne process and the Addis process to form a broad and appropriate framework that has yet to be fully exploited. Switzerland is ready to share experience. As you might well be aware of, Switzerland has restituted stolen assets in the amount of far more than 2 billion. This is about half of the world's asset restituted. Furthermore, there are global peer review mechanisms for issues like corruption, money laundering, terrorism financing, and for various aspects of ta taxation that are already in place and under implementation. In our view, the work of the panel should focus on these mechanisms that highlight very clearly the real world practical obstacles and challenge towards achieving the SDGs. We reserve the right to submit a more detailed written input explaining Switzerland's position regarding the documentation shared and look further to engage with the panelists. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Yeah. Then we have Japan. Okay. After Japan, we will come to Indonesia and Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, Excellencies and co-chairs. I'd like to begin with congratulating the members of the panel on the appointments. And I have the honor to present Japan's view on this panel briefly, taking advantage of this uh, virtual consultation with all the panel members. Japan believes that the financial integrity and combating illicit financial flows are key elements for achieving the SDGs in line with the goal 16 by promoting peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, providing access to justice for all and building effective, accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. Though we appreciate the co-chairs for providing the member states uh, this opportunity to consult with the panel, we'd like, we would have appreciated if we could have had more time to prepare rather than having less than one week notice. Uh, also, we would like to reiterate uh, our concerns as shared by other delegations on how the panel was established. At this time, when, all need, oh, we, when we all need to work together in solidarity in a fight against the pandemic of the COVID-19, we need to work on areas of consensus, avoid overlaps and duplications, and ensure full implementation of existing instruments and commitments, including those by Financial, Ac Financial Action Task Force, FATF, uh, OECD on BEPS and Tax Related Transparency, and G20, not undermine them. In this regard, we'd like to know how the panel has engaged or will engage those existing mechanisms when it proceeds with the discussions on the proposed three clusters before the panel foresees the establishment of additional international instruments. In closing, Japan is fully committed to addressing the devastating economic and social consequences and overcome the human security crisis caused by the pandemic, including through tackling this important topic. I thank you. Thank you very much. Um... Now we go to Indonesia, is it? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, Excellencies, panel members and colleagues. First, we would like to thank the FACTI panel for holding this virtual consultation. Indonesia looks forward to the work of the panel to contribute to the ongoing international efforts in addressing financing for development challenges, including in combating illicit financial flows. Indonesia recognizes that we need mutually reinforcing domestic and international actions to address illicit financial flows. In the interest of time, we will go directly to our recommendation to the panel. Uh, so in concluding its work, we look forward for the FACTI panel to make recommendations in a number of areas, uh, which we believe this is, uh, these are more related to the cluster. First is how to ensure a globally fair and sustainable international tax system, including by addressing the tax challenges arising from digitalization. We recognize digitalization continues to be an important driver for global economic growth, and we must ensure fair and equitable digitalized economy while continue promoting economic growth and cross-border trade and investment. 
Our efforts should include tax obligation for companies with significant economic presence in a country. Second, it is important that the work of the faculty panel synergizes and avoid duplication of work with existing mechanisms such as UNCAC and UNTOC. The panel should also conduct a gap analysis to identify what can be improved in the current architecture and ensure that it is fair, inclusive, and universal. This includes by identifying policy practices or legislative framework which hinders developing countries' efforts and abilities to recover stolen assets or go after tax avoidance in other jurisdictions. I thank you for the time given to us. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker, uh, Peter. And the last one I have on the list here is no. Kyrgyzstan. Perfect. Um, Kyrgyzstan, we, we can't hear you. Please try to unmute can you hear and me? try again. Uh, yes, now we can hear you. Can you? Please go oh, ahead. great, great. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you very much for uh, giving me uh, a word. Also, I would like would like express my gratitude to the organizers, uh, distinguished chairs and uh, members of the uh, faculty panel, as well as the all participants of today's event. It is very important for member states to hear all informations and hear suggestions and opinions on how this uh, panel should uh, work. Uh, Kyrgyzstan is very positive uh, on uh, mentioning the uh, third cluster of the panel concerning the uh, disputes uh, resolve and discussion. And in this regard, I have just one question and I will be grateful if you could provide the information on this questions is concerning on how uh, exactly a uh, FACTI panel uh, will support national efforts on disputes on return of financial funds illegal to, illegally, I'm sorry, extracted from uh, member states. I think the assets return is a very crucial process uh, for Kyrgyzstan and other uh, developing uh, countries, which will contribute to the, our implementation uh, of the SDGs and the 2030 agenda, as well as other relevant and globally important uh, documents on development issues. And I will be grateful if you could receive um, uh, comments on this issue. And uh, Kyrgyzstan will be g g happy to give additional written comments uh, to official uh, web uh, email of the affected panel. I uh, thank you for giving my word. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. So I I think, Peter, that we have come to the end of the list of speakers. That is correct. OK. So um, let me thank you all, uh, Excellencies, for the very valuable inputs which were provided. Uh, I can, we can assure you, co-chair and myself, that uh, uh, we will inform the panel's focus as we scale up our work. And by building on uh, your support and active engagement, I'm convinced that we will achieve the outcomes that we are set out to do by uh, February 2021. 20, uh, uh, a certain number of precise questions were, were made. Um, I gathered about uh, 16 of them. I don't think we have the necessary time to do it right now, but I can assure you that uh, they will be uh, as uh, uh, taken on board. Uh, very precise responses will be uh, made to each uh, one of those who did ask for the questions. Uh, I will try to Target the main points which I, which we heard during uh, this very rich interaction. Uh, the first uh, uh, point, which I think is critical, very important, which came out uh, repeatedly, is the necessity to build on what exists, uh, not to undermine, not to unravel what exists, uh, to be mindful of the ongoing intergovernmental discussions, to be mindful of the efforts uh, to avoid duplication. Uh, duplication came out several times. 
Well, it, it is in the uh, uh, spirit of the work of a panel uh, to follow that line, but my, being mindful of the gaps, if the panel can bring an added value to the member states, is to highlight the gaps which are linked to uh, implementation of the existing frameworks and the existing instruments. Uh, the, the second point uh, I would like to highlight, uh, which came out quite uh, uh, intensively, was the principle of regular consultation, of dialogue, and we evidently welcome to the expansion of opportunities for inclusive participation. And I think it's, it is very important. Uh, several times uh, it was mentioned that uh, the fact of uh, you have been, you received uh, the documentation in a short notice, it didn't allow a, a sound interaction. Uh, well, a sound, uh, a full comprehensive analysis. Uh, we will take note of, of that. Uh, the following point is, uh, uh, which was enhanced several times, is the necessity uh, uh, to make practical recommendations, uh, evidence-based. I heard this expression several times. Uh, evidence-based practical recommendation for effective mechanisms. And uh, I think all the panel members do agree on uh, the necessity to or to go towards a very uh, practical uh, uh, recommendations. Uh, we uh, heard uh, quite um, uh, clearly uh, the different recommendations that you made, uh, the comments that you made, the concerns that you raised regarding the workings of the free identified pan uh, clusters we, we welcome uh, the support that you provided to that distinction between uh, the, the different clusters on tax matters, on anti-corruption, on uh, uh, settling disputes, reporting. So uh, the main rationale of uh, having clusters uh, is not to uh, work in terms of silos, and as uh, uh, Mr. Campo was saying in one of in his intervention, uh, uh, some issues uh, are cross-cutting and can go beyond one cluster. And uh, this is uh, the, uh, the the quality of the group dynamics of a panel uh, will allow to uh, ensure that these cross-cutting issues are reflected so that at the end of the working of a panel, we have a, a coherent report. Evidently, uh, the, this report, uh, uh, in its essence, uh, uh, can only be useful if it has your support. And this was the main reason that we engaged with of the member states in order to have their point of views, their concerns, their recommendations. We are fully cognizant of the fact that the added value will be in looking towards a consensus, in looking towards being effective, and in looking towards having practical recommendations. Peter? Uh, nothing else from our side. Okay. So I would like to thank you once again uh, for this very rich interaction and wish you and your loved ones uh, continued health and success to all efforts to control the spread of COVID-19 and address the economic consequences of, uh, of a pandemic. Uh, we need to stop the virus and we need to evidently uh, face a new world where we hope uh, the agenda of the Sustainable Development Goals will make even more sense. Thank you very much. 
uh, for uh, uh, your uh, uh, participation. And we sincerely uh, uh, are very grateful of the comments that were made.